Please enjoy to the story Peter the Lost Boy Series 1 by Lightning Striker. Tears. They trickled their way down my face until they finally reached the end of the road. In a way, these tears and I weren't so different after all. We both just wanted to be set free, to run wild, and to never ever be stopped. Silently the paint rolled out from my eyes and trickled down my cheek, kissing the very pores that I had grown to despise so deeply. Why is it that every time I look in the mirror all I see is a dead corpse who is somehow struggling to find something that's worth holding on to? Why is it that I am such a good, kind, and deeply compassionate person but no one ever seems to care about my well-being? Is it so much to ask to be loved? To ask for a stranger to say hi? To even have one soul to call a friend? Perhaps it was me. Of course it was. It had to be. There just had to be some abnormal quality about myself that made others shy away. Perhaps I was too antisocial or maybe it was the fact that I didn't like taking on makeup like other girls my age do. Wherever I went wrong, I couldn't pinpoint. If anything counts I wish it would be the qualities of compassion and heart. I do love humanity and wish the best for it. I really do. However, in order to love something you have to be a part of it first and I was the one who always sat alone watching from the sidelines. Wiping my tears away, I splashed water all over my flushed face. Plastering the thickest smile on my face, I repeatedly practiced looking happy. Happiness was a beautiful facade when you knew you were cracking, breaking, and crumbling beneath the surface. Throwing my backpack over my arm, my feet somehow managed to move beneath me taking my usual seat at the back of the classroom. A heavy sigh escaped my lips. The lump formed in my throat as I held back my tears, waiting for the lecture to begin. Fate seemed to be on my side as the teacher called our attention to the front of the room. Beside him stood a boy so mesmerizing, I nearly drowned within his gaze. Hoping he wouldn't notice me, I averted my attention to a notebook and began nervously doodling in it. Class. We have a new student today who just transferred here. Please give Peter a warm welcome. The boys looked perplexed and the girls all gawked and batted their eyelashes at him. Sure, he was pretty good looking but guys like him were always trouble. At the sound of his name, a smile cracked across my face. Peter? Really? Like Peter Parker? Maybe the boy was Spider-Man undercover and would somehow sweep me off my feet and help me escape this dreadful town. The girl could only wish. As I looked up, my thought process was interrupted as he walked down the aisle and took a seat beside me. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Glancing at the boy beside me, his cheeks happily pushed up his eyes as he flashed me a breathtaking smile. Taking the seat to my right. He folded his arms on the table as his eyes peered up and curiously scanned over me. Giving him the cold shoulder, I stopped scribbling in my notebook and began nervously tapping my pen repeatedly on the ink-covered paper. Noticing the notion he sat upright and mumbled a quick, Hey! Staring at him like an idiot, we both scanned each other's expressions. Acknowledging him with a quick nod of my head. I averted my attention back to the teacher who began to write on the board with a blue dry erase marker. I couldn't help but notice that my body felt abnormally tense and all I wanted to do was melt into a puddle and slither my way out of the class without being noticed. It's not like I wasn't used to everyone ignoring me anyway. If anything, I would probably be able to stand up from the back row of this class, walk to the front and exit the classroom without anyone even taking a second glance. Feeling his eyes staring into my skin, my head darted in his direction as I stared at him with a cold glare. Looking a bit surprised, he uncomfortably shuffled in his seat and laid his head in his hand while blankly staring at the board. Bored out of my mind, I couldn't help but loudly yawn. All of a sudden, a faint scratching sound came from my desk and then was when I noticed that a notebook had slid across the table and landed before me. Glancing up at him, he sent me a cheapish smile and shrugged. Shaking my head back and forth, 
curiosity took a hold of me. Looking at the paper below, there were three simple words that were written in pencil. His chicken scratch was so sloppy that a light chuckle couldn't help but escape my lips. Hi. I'm Peter. Clearly he didn't get the memo. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Staring at the page before me, my mind froze up. How was I to respond to an absolute stranger? Was I even supposed to respond back? The more I glanced down at the three sloppily written words, the more anxious I became. I have never written notes before, let alone with a boy. By the time my pencil reached the paper, beads of sweat were dripping off of my forehead. Playing it safe I decided to play it with a simple high. Slickly sliding the notebook over to the boy beside me, I thanked God that our teacher hadn't glanced back and caught us yet. From the corner of my eye Peter could be seen shaking his head and smiling. Sliding the notebook back to me, my eyes curiously scanned over his response. Not one for words, but funny, I thought. It was lucky I could even make out his words. His writing was so illegible, it was pretty hard to decipher. If his regular writing looked like this, I could only imagine what his cursive looked like. Nope. Passing the paper back to him, he quickly wrote back. So you have a name. Looking at him like he was an idiot, a sly smirk danced on his lips. Yes. As he read over my word, he shot me a look and mouthed really. Covering my mouth so my giggle wouldn't escape, he shoved the notebook back at me. So you're playing hard to get. Rolling my eyes, I had to bite my lip from responding in person. No. I just thought you'd like to take a lucky guess. His emerald eyes swiftly shuffled over my response and as his pencil scribbled sloppy words on the paper, a smile formed on his face. A challenge that I'll gladly take no lady. What letter should I begin with? A. Your name doesn't start with an A, does it? Nope, not even close. Lightning underscore striker 2016. One plus one. Studying over my face, Peter's eyebrows scrunched together in a thinking manner. As his emerald green eyes studied every individual feature of my face, I felt myself blush. I could only wish that I learned to control this reflex. Scribbling words in the notebook, we began our wonderful exchange of notes once again. Okay is it Sarah? Pretty name, but no. Alice? You really need to try harder. Placing his hand around his chin, a bright smile took over his face and managed to also take away my breath. Seriously, this boy had some kind of magical quality to him. Swiftly running his pencil across the paper, he shifted the notebook over to me. Petunia. You look like the Petunia. Petunia. I looked like I could be named Petunia. That was definitely a new one. Usually people would tell me that I looked like a Becky or a Samantha, but never in my life had I ever heard that I looked like a Petunia. Cute name, but no. Well, I'm stumped. Can I at least get a hint? You've probably never heard it before. Glaring at me, he scribbled down another name. Zelaria. Nope. Shaking my head back and forth, I mouthed to him give up. Reciprocating my expression, he mouthed, never. Suddenly clearing his throat, our teacher's attention turned toward us. Mr. Finnegan, Ms. Riverdale. I would hope that you were paying attention to the lecture. Lainey and Peter, please make your way up here and solve this problem, he demanded, pointing his dry erase marker toward the board. Peter on the other hand was grinning like a child beside me since my name had unwillingly been revealed. Sitting up straighter in his chair, Peter stared at the board. Well sir, there's no need to go up there since the answer is obviously to overpipe. I'm sure my new friend here knows that. She seems like a smart cookie. Friends? Since when did we become friends? Looking flabbergasted, the teacher responded with a simple. You are correct Peter. Wow you must have had a rigorous course at your old school. You could say something like that, he said smirking. Saving my entire life, the bell rang and I couldn't be more grateful.
throwing his book bag over one of his shoulders. He sent me a devious smirk and said, See you around Lightning. Then we both went our separate paths. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Brock the job. Blending into the background, I proceeded through the hallways carrying my large stack of books. Finally, it was time to go home and I couldn't wait to snuggle up in my bed. School really seems to suck the life out of you. Struggling to keep my books balanced in my arms, I was relieved when my locker came into sight. Balancing the pile in one arm and using my newly freed one to turn the dial on the locker, a heavy force came down upon my books and all of my papers and books scattered across the floor. Enraged, I fought back tears as I struggled to pick up essays and hours of hard work before people carelessly stepped all over them. Fire blazing in my eyes, I stared at the husky six-foot guy that leaned coolly against my locker. The devilish smirk crept up on his face as he saw my expression. His posse stood beside him, following the him like little lost puppies and here I was actually looking like one compared to their size. His deep voice broke out in a chuckle that seemed to resemble more of a cackle to me. Ah, sorry loser Laney. Did you lose all your papers again? When will you ever learn to get a life? I scowled. Pick on someone your own size. Wrapping his piggish arm around me, he said, You should be grateful that you're in the presence of a football player. It's probably the closest you'll ever be to someone with our kind of status. Shrugging his arm off of me, I looked him in the eye. And exactly what status is that? Being a fat pig. I'm shocked you don't roll over and heave while you're on the field, I shot back. Some of his fellow football players chuckled in the background while I continued. And just so you know, you're not in the NFL. You don't have any kind of status to the people out in the real world, so get a grip of yourself. He chuckled to himself, wow, what a sour attitude to have. No wonder why you don't have any friends. A knot of anger twisted in my stomach as I noticed that he had now started to catch the attention of random students in the hallway. An embarrassed blush came over my face as I realized that he had just publicly humiliated me. Brock just leave me alone, okay? I'm not in the mood, I said, throwing my math book into the locker with a loud slam. Cutting my face from the side, he unwillingly turned my face to look at him. Get your paws off of me. As I shoved his unusually large hand to the side, he proceeded to pick at me. I can't help it. It's just dot dot you get so cute when you're angry, he said as a few of the guys laughed in the background. Look here you giant. Up, uh, Lainey I think you drop this. Turning my head around, I let out a sigh of relief. The boy that I was dying to get away from last block had just came and saved the day. Inwardly, I felt disgusted at how cliché my life sounded at this particular moment. And this one, Peter proceeded, picking up the report that was now covered in muddy shoe stains. Oh my gosh, really? I said, slapping my hand against my head. That report is due tomorrow. Peter's mouth turned into an innocent frown as he shrugged. Sorry. Brock's eyebrows furrowed in confusion, and who exactly is pretty boy weak? Peter's eyebrows furrowed in confusion. Well that's a new one. Never heard that one before. Brock nodded. Well congrats, you've just earned yourself a new nickname. Holding out his hand, Peter attempted to introduce himself. Hey, I'm Peter. Peter Finnegan. Nice to meet you. Staring at Peter like he was a psychopath, Brock eyed him. Catching on, Peter awkwardly put his hand behind his back and scratched his head. I couldn't help but notice a little muscle that bulged out as he did that. Uh, I'm guessing you're not a handshake kind of dude. Brock smirked. No, I'm a football kind of dude, he stated matter-of-factly. And what kind of name is Finnegan? Peter casually shrugged. I don't know. Your mom seems to really like it, he said with a wink. As everyone's jaws dropped, 
Peter smiled and wrapped his arm around my neck. Now's your time to get away. He's still in shock, Peter whispered as we walked away. So am I. And we both couldn't help but chuckle our way out of the building. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Small talk. Dude, what's his problem? Peter asked as he unwrapped his arm from around me. We descended the front steps of the school as he put one hand in his jean pocket. The sunlight illuminated his brown hair to a lighter shade and his emerald green eyes scanned over my face as a frown took over his pale pink lips. He's always been like that and he never quits, I responded with a scowl, walking past him. Well, have you told someone about it? He asked, catching up with me. I couldn't help but notice that a few girls were staring and gawking at him as he jogged to catch up to me. My parents, yeah. But they all know the story. You could always report it to the principal you know, he said matter-of-factly. This boy was pretty sassy for a stranger. Why do you care so much anyway? I'm nothing but a stranger to you. Lady, that is bullying. People should be reprimanded for stuff like that. He can't just get away with knocking your books over. Obviously getting worked up, he shook his head back and forth. Peter, there's more than meets the eye. You just moved here. I've known Brock for forever. He actually lives on the same street as me. He actually had a crush on me when we were younger. I mumbled the last part, instantly regretting even mentioning it. Peter stopped in his tracks, raising an eyebrow. Really? You and Brock are a thing. Shaking my head back and forth, I raised my hands up in defense. No no no, it's not. So he's an ex. No. We were never a thing. He just had this major crush on me from middle school and into freshman year. That was it. It was nothing more than that. Glaring at me from the corner of his eyes, Peter tried to keep a straight face but failed. Instantaneously, a smile danced on his lips and I couldn't help but reciprocate the expression. Tucking my hands in my jacket pocket, I made small talk. So, where did you transfer from exactly? Peter let out a laugh, ah, it's nowhere important. I'd rather keep that in my past. Shrugging I said, fair enough. But hey, thanks for sticking up for me back there. Means a lot. A breathtaking smile appeared on his face, hey, it's no problem. You walk this way home to nothing, I smiled. Yup. I still can't believe you told that to Brock though. Laughing. He replied, honestly, I can't either. And from there we talked and laughed all the way home. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Lethal. The alarm constantly rang until I decided to go and drag my butt out of bed. Going through my reparative morning routine, I probably took a shower and got dressed for school. Making my way downstairs with my backpack slung over my shoulder. My mother's heels frantically clicked against the floor. Morning Ma, I unenthusiastically grumbled. Hey! Morning Babe! Your dad is doing overtime today so he won't be home till about 6 or 7. My boss also persisted that I stay in until 6 today, she said while rolling her eyes. As she waited for her toaster waffles to pop out, she shuffled to the refrigerator to get some orange juice. On the other hand, here I was grabbing the colorful box of cereal that was placed in our old cabinets. As soon as her waffles popped up, she grabbed them and instantaneously dropped them on the counter. You dork! Of course they're going to be hot! They literally just came out of the toaster! I giggled. This made her serious expression crack into a smile. I know, I just don't want to be late. Hey, well take it easy. She turned around and studied me through the lens of her professional glasses. Dressed in a short-sleeved gray dress and black pumps, I didn't know how she managed. No wonder she always looked so tired. The poor woman was a workaholic. Well, I will see you later. I'm thinking of picking up pizza on the way home. I'll text you on my lunch break, she said while grabbing her purse and keys.
have a good day at school lane. Nodding toward her, she shut the door and left me alone, surrounded by nothing but utter silence. Tilda 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 tilda. Waiting in front of the school, the sun shone bright and its warmth kissed my skin. Teens were chatting amongst each other in groups, just waiting for the starting bell to ring. I, on the other hand, pretended to be busy on my phone while wallowing in my own self-pity. Perhaps it was my fault that I didn't have any friends. I was so antisocial that I didn't even know how to correctly approach a person. All of a sudden a deep, masculine voice spoke into my ear and sent tentacles down my spine. It's way too early to be sad Laney, Peter playfully whispered into my ear. I'm starting to think you're a creeper, I responded stepping away from him. Scanning his expression, he looked offended. Just trying to make small talk is all, he said while sassily crossing his arms over his chest. Looking at his expression, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. I barely knew this guy, but I couldn't help but feel like I've known him forever. He just seemed to have this radiant glow about him and it seemed to radiate outward. So Mr. Feeney, I said, poking fun of his last name, what's your first class? Fetching a paper out of his book bag, he looked over his schedule. English with Mr. Liddell. As soon as he said the name out loud, he laughed so hard that I thought he was going to roll over. Liddell. That's so funny. It's like Liddell 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 Liddell. Peter, what drugs did you put in your cereal? I said as I laughed with him. As he caught his breath, he said seriously, I ate pop tar slaney, not cereal. And as the bell rang he got swept up in the crowd. So I decided that I would just catch up with him at my first class, English with Mr. Liddell. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Brand new pages. As I sat down next to the empty seat next to Peter, his eyes nearly bulged out of his head. You have Liddell Lee too. Snorting, I shook my head and laughed. Going through my folder, I gasped when I realized that the essay due today had gotten stepped all over due to the incident with Brock yesterday. Nuru. What? Peter asked as he coped an eyebrow. My essay, I squealed, pointing to the giant muddy footprint on it. Oh, he said, examining the paper. Oh man, you didn't print the number one. I wish I would've, but no I didn't. How could I have forgotten? I'm such an idiot. I screamed, putting my head down on the desk. His hand wrapped around my wrist as his green eyes held concern within them. Hey, you're not an idiot. You shouldn't fret about little things like that. That was 200 points. My grade is going to plummet. Hey, take it easy. Just go through this again. He said as he grabbed my English folder. Flipping through the papers, he looked back up at me in surprise. You write a lot of essays, don't you? Shaking my head, he shuffled through the papers. Hey, this one is dated today. Wait, wait. Scratch that. It's a history essay. Sorry. Sighing, I felt my face flush a bright shade of red. I have never felt more stupid in my entire life and now my grade was going to reflect my level of stupidity. Giving up, I laid my head on the desk and wrapped my arms around my face. Wait, wait. I think I found something. Is this it? He asked with a giant grin plastered on his face. Passing the paper towards me, I read through bits and pieces of it and it was the same exact essay as the one with the footprint on it. This was in there. Nothing, he replied, yup. Sometimes looking his half of the problem. As he passed my folder back to me I searched for the ruined essay but it was nowhere to be found. I was also 100% positive that I had only printed one copy of this essay. What kind of sorcery is this? Peter, where is the other essay? What essay? The one that got ruined. He just looked forward and smiled. What did you do to it? I pressed on, but was quickly cut off by Mr. Liddell's voice. Where in the world was the other essay and how had he done this? 
Lightning underscore striker 2016 Live As soon as the bell rang, I raced after Peter who tried to quickly make a run for it. Latching onto his shoulder, he stopped in his tracks as I resisted the urge to angrily slam him against the locker. What was that? What was what? The paper? What did you do to the paper? I looked through your folder and found it. Maybe you should look through your stuff more, he said, nervously putting the hand through his hair. My heart may have just skipped a beat. Should I ask why you're biting your lip like that? He asked curiously looking over my face. Feeling the blush rush over my face, I came back with, I do that when I'm angry. That was lie number one. How embarrassing. Well that is one weird reflex to have, he said as he sped ahead of me. Catching up to him, I noticed that a rosy blush had taken over his face. Mr. Finnegan, are you blushing? I choked. I do that when I'm angry, he said as he walked away. I didn't see him for the rest of the day, including our math class. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Rocks. It had now been a week since Peter had disappeared. After the incident with the paper, he was nowhere to be seen. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing that he was gone, but it did feel quite different. Math class felt especially boring since the seat next to me had been empty for a while now. So once again I became Lainey, the girl who blended in with the peeling paint on the wall. Of course Brock took advantage of moments like this to taunt and tease me. For some reason, he liked to constantly knock my books out of my hand and make me turn tomato red in front of everyone. As I picked up my scattered papers I huffed and walked away knowing to make him pay for everything he has done to me. For someone who is trying to get a girl's attention, he sure isn't doing a good job at it. The school day was long and lonely and I would occasionally catch myself thinking about Peter. Though I had only knew the boy for two days, I couldn't help but feel like he was the only person who even acknowledged that I existed. Usually most people would walk by me like I was invisible and unimportant. But Peter happened to know this that I was alive. He happened to realize that I was a real person that had goals and motives, and through that he also happened to know this how utterly lonely I was. Maybe that was the reason he went away. Maybe he couldn't deal with someone as sad and sulky as me. The walk home had felt utterly lonely, though I was used to walking home alone. I just couldn't help but feel like I anticipated walking home with him and getting to know him. Yet I was utterly terrified of getting close to him. What if all along he had intended to harm me? What if Brock had hired him? Mom was working and Dad had an afternoon meeting which left me alone in the house. Following in my own self-pity, I read a book until I got bored. After taking a shower, I watched a little TV and then eventually made my way to my bed. Curling up into a ball, tears trickled down my face and a light wail escaped my lips. As I sobbed my way to sleep, I realized that the only person who would hear my cries was myself. Tilda dot tilda dot tilda dot tilda dot tilda. Tap dot 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 tap tap dot 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 tap. My eyes peeled open as I laid and stared at the ceiling tap. Seriously, what in the world is that noise? Tap tap. Looking to where the noise was coming from, tiny rocks could be seen hitting my window. Bra needs to stop already, I grumbled, moving toward the window. However, I was wrong. Looking out the window, the silhouette of a boy could be seen happily waving from the middle of the street. It was Peter. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Confessions. Opening my window, I whisper shouted, Peter, what are you doing here? The chuckle escaped from his lips as he replied from the street, coming to visit you. Does. Dude, my parents are sleeping. I can't sneak a boy in. From afar, I noticed he coped his eyebrow in a questioning manner. I sighed, hold on. Turning around, I was internally freaking out. What in the world was this boy doing in the middle of the street this late that night? And why in the world was he visiting me of all people? 
swiftly shuffling things around on my messy dresser. I glanced over at the window to see Peter climbing through it. After seeing how my face had morphed into an expression of terror, he swiftly ran and covered my mouth before a scream escaped my lips. What are you doing? Putting his finger to his lips, he kept going, S-H. S-H-H. Why are you here and how did you? You were just in the middle of the street. How did you? Hey, hey, he said as he held his hands out in an innocent manner. If you would stop freaking out, I promise to explain everything. Please do because I happen to think I'm dreaming right now. Giving me a little pinch, I winced in pain. See, you felt the pinch. You're awake. What do you want? Why haven't you been at school? Scratching his head, he sighed. Certain obligations. Ever since that weird thing with the paper, you haven't showed up. I sat on my bed as he took a seat beside me. Clasping his hands on his lap, he took in a deep breath and sighed. I know, but I have my reasons. Which are? He sighed. I sort of freaked out. About. I pressed on. What was bothering him so much that he couldn't bother to show up at school? You caught him and so I freaked. With the paper? Of course I did. I knew I only had one copy of it. But what did you do to it? His emerald eyes lost their shine and stared deeply into mine. Hidden within those beautiful eyes was a hint of fear. I fixed it. Stop being so vague, I replied as I shot him a glare. How did you fix it? He sighed and stared out of the open window. The moonlight shone down on his silhouette, illuminating all of his boyish features. His lips pursed in seriousness as he took a glance in my direction. My powers. I reversed the effect and made the paper crisp and clean again. Powers. And then was when I realized that I had just let a madman into my bedroom. This boy must have been living in some fictional world of his because who in their right mind shows up at this time of night saying that they have powers. He seriously put some type of drug in his cereal. Nothing. He shut his eyelids tight. And so I disappeared because I was absolutely terrified of how you'd react. Lightning underscore striker 2016. They slash in. What do you guys think about being called Lost Boys? You know, like when I refer to the readers. Any other suggestions? Colon D. The bedroom window. Staring at Peter with my mouth gaped open, I struggled to hold back a laugh. Your powers. Peter. What in the world are you talking about? Do I need to take you to a hospital or something? Shaking his head back and forth, his chest moved inward as he released a heavy sigh. I should have known th. Well you did just stand in the middle of the street throwing pebbles at my window at like 3 in the morning. You also managed to somehow get into my room and now you're telling me that you have powers. Like what am I supposed to do? Say wow. That's great. Not being harsh, but most people would say that you're absolutely crazy. Let me ask you something, he said, scanning his eyes over my expression. Okay. What? How do you think I got through that window? As I shrugged, he smirked. Exactly my point. Shooting him a puzzled expression, a wide smile plastered itself on his face. It's not like you flew through it or something. Letting out a nervous chuckle, he smiled. Funny you should say that. Staring at him in disbelief, he stood up and brushed his jeans off. Allow me to demonstrate. Rolling my eyes at him, he crawled his way out of the window. Curiously leaning on the window pane, I watched as he stood on the roof. He closed his eyes, let out a puff of breath, and slowly but surely began to rise from the overhang of the house. My eyes couldn't believe the sight before me. The type of golden shimmer danced around him as he floated above the house and defied all rules of gravity. Suddenly, I felt the blood rush from my cheeks. Clearly enjoying the fact that he had just made his point, he smiled and returned back to his position on the roof. Climbing back through the window, he smiled. 
Do you believe me now Laney? Shaking my head, I stared at him like a deer in headlights. The boy had just levitated above my house. You look pale, he said, putting a cold hand on my bare shoulder. I probably am. I just can't how did, and I dropped the sentence. How in the world could you follow it up? Don't worry. I get that a lot. My eyebrows cocked in confusion. A lot? How many people know about this? He fiddled with his thumbs. A few hundred kids around the world. No one around here though, I promise. Which is why you must keep this a secret. If you tell anyone, I can't get in deep, deep trouble. And if I do tell someone, I tested. I couldn't help but want to push for more information, to know more about his secret. His green eyes painfully widened as if I had already told someone. Ben don't expect to ever see me again. Why? It's against the rules to just tell any ordinary person about my secret. The rules. What are you talking about? He smiled. Well where do I begin? At the start of it all. Well that's a lot, he said. Do you want to go for a walk? At three in the morning? He shrugged. Sure, why not? Uh, because I have school. Well, then I guess you'll have to wait. No. No, I'll go now. Just dot 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 how am I going to sneak out the house without my parents hearing the door? As a devilish smile danced on his perfectly rosy lips, a nervous pit grew in my stomach. We were leaving through the window. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Introductions. Extending his hand out to me, he smiled. Are you coming or what? The knot in my stomach twisted and turned until I began feeling queasy. There was no way he was going to get me to go out there. Shaking my head back and forth, he just shot me a glare. Come on. I promise nothing will happen. But dot 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 heights have never been my favorite thing. He chuckled. I can't see that. You look horrified. His golden shimmer began to surround him again as his feet floated a few inches off of the ground. Holding his hand out, I hesitantly grabbed it and made my way out of my window. He tugged me closer to him to the point where we were standing face to face. Then was when I realized that his emerald eyes had flakes of brown in them. As the moonlight shone upon his angelic face, I couldn't help but feel a bit relieved. He shot me a smile. See, step one. Seeing the view from which we were standing made me want to scream out loud. Oh my. Clasping a hand around my mouth, Peter stepped in front of my view and looked sternly at me. Hey, listen to me. I can't get you to level ground. However, you need to hold on tight. And suddenly I felt my fear melt away into embarrassment. Was he seriously asking me to cling onto him like a doll? Uh, that's really odd. It'll be two seconds max, I promise. Just don't want to get you hurt. Sighing, I knew I had no choice. I jumped on his back and wrapped my arms around his chest as I simultaneously made sure that my legs weren't dangling in thin air. You could? He asked. Uh, sure. Taking that as an okay. He began lifting into the air and I was so terrified that I squeezed onto him even tighter. Hopefully the poor guy could still breathe. When we reached level ground, I unraveled myself from him with a blush and he threw himself backwards on the floor. He chuckled as he put his hands behind his head in relaxation. Taking a seat on the grass beside him, he peered up at me. So are you going to tell me your story now? Yeah. So where do I begin? Where you're from? Who is telling you to keep your powers secret? Why you even have powers in the first place? You know, just simple everyday questions like that. Playfully rolling his eyes, a smirk formed on his mouth. I love your sarcasm. As I pretended bowing, he smiled. How about I start with my name? My eyes instantaneously widened. Your name? I've been calling you by a different name this whole time. Is your name Balan? Ricky? You look like a Ricky. 
or you could be a leaf. Yeah, I can't see that. Glaring at me, I put a sock in it. He was obviously waiting for his turn to talk. Lady, calm down. My name is Peter. It's just not Peter Finnegan. Okay, then what is your oh-so-mysterious last name? Looking at me with the most adorable smile ever, he held a hand out for me to shake. Hi, I'm Peter. Peter Pan. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Stargazing. Shaking his hand, I couldn't help but smile. You know, normally I would think that a person was crazy if they told me that they were Peter Pan, but for some reason I think you've already proved yourself. He chuckled. Thank you for being so understanding. A lot of people usually aren't this understanding. Of course. But why are you here of all places, Mr. Pan? I asked, saying his name in an accent. I was sent down here, he said as he glared up at the stars. Pulling my knees up to my chest, I stared out at the great sky. By who? I asked. His head turned to face me, and finally he began to spill the beans. Well as quick as it is, I am from Neverland. Chuckling, I shook my head back and forth. Of course. Where exactly is that located? Diverting his attention to the sky again, he pointed upward. Light ears and light ears away. It's one of the smaller stars and sometimes it could be looked over, but it definitely shines the brightest, he said looking over toward me. As I locked eyes with him, a certain softness was held within his that made my heart begin to melt and made butterflies wildly flutter within my stomach. Noticing that we were holding the gaze for too long, he averted his attention back toward the stars. However, I did manage to catch a glimpse of the blush that took over his face before he moved. Do you see it? That one right there. The one that looks reddish? He shook his head. No 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 no, this one. Grabbing my wrist, he moved my hand toward the correct star and I saw that he was right. It definitely was the star that shined the brightest in the night sky and it was absolutely breathtaking. So why did you come all the way from there to here? I curiously asked. Well, I was assigned a job up in Netherland. I was to help the ones on Earth who needed guidance or felt unloved. And you're here now, or? He sat up and locked gaze with me. Nervously scratching his head, he said, For you actually. I'm here for you. Me? I asked, my thumb pointing to myself. Nodding, his lips pursed in a slightly sad manner. Yeah. But why? He clasped his hands together on his lap. Because the council told me that there was a girl down here who felt that she was invisible. There was a girl down here who felt unloved, unappreciated, and in result didn't feel she was worth anything and they told me that her name was Lainey Riverdale. As much as I tried to keep up a strong front, my facade quickly faded. As he spoke, every individual word pulled at my heart strings and breathed a needle through it. They were killing me, hitting me where it hurt the most and as a lump grew in my throat, my lip began to quiver. As my eyes watered, so did his. Lainey, why do you feel this way? He asked. It's just dot 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 sometimes I feel invisible, like no one can see me you know. I sniffled and wiped a tear away. At school, I'm known as Loser Lately and everyone just walks by me like I blend into the wall. No one even acknowledges my existence unless they need help with a science project or want me to do their homework. Then I come home to an empty house. I have no siblings and mom and dad are always working. It's not that I blame them or anything it's just dot 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 it's just tiring, you know. Wiping tears away, Peter stared at me intently. Placing a comforting hand on my shoulder, his tear-filled eyes glistened in the moonlight. Listen, I know. I know what you're going through. I know what it's like to have no one to talk to, to fall asleep in the dark silence of the atmosphere. I know what it's like to feel invisible because I'm not even allowed to be who I am. 
I have to pretend I'm Peter Finnegan or Peter Wilde. Even Peter Parker? I asked while sleepily rubbing my eyes. Even Peter Parker, he cooed. And the worst part is that nobody caught on to the name. As I laid on the barren ground I smiled. Thank you Peter. And all I remember is my hair being gently pushed out of my face and the covers being pulled back over me. That was the most peaceful sleep I had in a very long time. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Sugar. English class was quite fun since Peter had decided to come back. Taking the seat beside me, a giant grin plastered on his face. The whole time we were in class, we decided to pass goofy notes to each other. Still taking in the fact that I was sitting next to Peter Pan was a little odd. I mean. He's freaking Peter Pan. How was I supposed to react to a boy who revealed all this to me at three in the morning? All day long my feet probably dragged behind me. Noticing how tired I was, Peter felt guilty for waking me up so he decided to do something to make up for his midnight extravaganza. He insisted on taking me out for ice cream this afternoon. Seeing that ice cream was one of my favorite delights, he knew there was no way I could reject the offer. Meeting up at the front of an ice cream parlor, we walked in and were swiftly seated at a booth. Though I had insisted on getting cones and leaving, he insisted that we sit down and chat over milkshakes. The little parlor itself looked like it froze in past eras when life seemed much simpler than it is today. Portraits of Elvis and Marilyn Monroe lined the diner along with a photo of the hosts and cookers dressed up like the grease cast. A little chrome jukebox sat in the corner of the room, beckoning me to press every single red button that was built into the hunk of music box. What are you getting? Peter asked, his green eyes curiously peering up at me as he laid his head on the table. Chocolate milkshake, I replied, sending him a duck face. Staring at my protruded lips, the giggle erupted from his chest. But vanilla is so much better, he teased. No, definitely chocolate. But marshmallows are vanilla flavored, he stated matter-of-factly. Dude, you know that there are chocolate ones too, right? There are, he asked, the puzzled look taking over his face. Nodding yes, he blankly stared at me. Peter? There are strawberry ones, too. Dude, you must be spending way too much time in Netherland. Crossing his arms over his chest, his eyebrow went up. You really want to go there today, Lainey? Yes, I do, I said, sticking my nose in the air. So sassy, he said, shaking his head back and forth. Hey, who you calling? Hi. I'm Melissa and I'll be your server today. What can I get for you? Peter smiled at the teenage girl and I'm pretty sure I saw her melt into a puddle before him. Seriously, what was with this girl? I'll take a vanilla milkshake, extra sprinkles, he said, jokingly glaring at me. And I'll have a chocolate milkshake with two cherries, I tested. Sending him a smirk, he let out a gasp which made Melissa look at us like we were absolutely crazy. I'll be back right away, she replied while still staring at us like we were insane. Wow, what a rebel. Two cherries. You're a total thug, he choked. Playfully nudging his arm that was on the table, I laughed. Shut up. We should do this more often, he replied. It's fun. Blushing, he noticed the weird look I gave him and began to stutter over his words. But why why you know? It totally like makes me feel all jittery I mean like it, he sighed. It was just a suggestion, he said, nervously avoiding eye contact. Was he indirectly asking me on a date? Why did he just turn tomato red before me? You okay? I asked, sending him a concerned look. Turning even more red, I wondered if I should call the ambulance. If he turned any more red, he'd catch on fire. T.T. totally. The giggle escaped my lips. My goodness, the boy was so nervous. Putting the hand through his hair, his eyes locked with mine. My stomach twisted and flopped in weird ways that I'd never experienced before. My goodness, 
Was I equally as nervous as he was right now? What was this feeling? So what's Neverland like? I asked, breaking the awkward silence that was lingering between us. Busy, so busy that I barely have time to breathe sometimes. Really? He nodded. Yeah. It gets quite hectic up there. Being down here is a relief sometimes. Really? You think so? Sometimes, I wish I could be somewhere else. I'd kill to switch places with you. Why? He asked, raising an eyebrow. Because then maybe I'd actually fit in, I said, looking down at the cold table. Maybe I'd have a place up there. Placing the hand on top of mine, his eyes interlocked with mine. Looking intently into his green eyes, words could not manage to form within my mouth. Lady, you most definitely have a place down here. Don't ever think you are less than anyone else. But Peter, sometimes I feel like no one sees me, you know. Like I wasn't supposed to exist in the first place. Why would you even think that? Lady, you are such an amazing person. How so? Are you kidding me? Where do I begin? He asked, taking his hand off of mine. First off, you're so smart. You basically live in your school books. Most people would kill to have the grades you do. Plus, you're super artistic. I see some of those doodles you do in your notebooks when you get bored. Don't think those go unnoticed, he said, wiggling his eyebrows. Ah, there's that pretty smile, he said, which made my smile turn even bigger. Butterflies roamed around freely in my stomach, making me feel fuzzy inside. And those are only two great things about you. There's plenty more, he said, as he glanced at Melissa coming over with our milkshakes. As she placed them on the table, he hungrily licked his lips. Bon a petty. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Picnic paradise. One week, two weeks, three weeks passed and before I knew it, school had finally come to an end. No more school, no more books, no more teachers at least until next year. Rejoicing, I was so happy that I wouldn't have to see Brock's face as often and that I wouldn't have to read the long, dreadful passages of textbook material for the next three months. Currently, I was absolutely exhausted from taking final exams and couldn't wait to have a fresh start during senior year. Throwing a tank top over my head, I peeked out of my bedroom window and saw Peter waving to me from the sidewalk. Over the last three weeks we had spent a lot of time with each other and got to know each other a little better. He found out that I'm deathly afraid of spiders, which was not only embarrassing to me but totally amusing to him. I found out that he finds the sound of water to be very soothing. One day last week, we stopped and chatted by a fountain. He was so relaxed by the water that he nearly fell asleep. Along with our little trips to the park, skating rink, arcade, and ice cream parlor, Peter had also made sure to do daily exercises with me to help boost my self-esteem. First Peter would make me repeat. I am an amazing person who is worth the whole wide world and Neverland. Every time I would mumble the statement or glare at him, he would make me say it all over again. He would make me repeat the statement a minimum number of ten times, not including the times that I was crouchy about doing it. Every single day, Peter would give me a brand new phrase to repeat and then we would go on some adventurous activity together. He stated that repeating these phrases would help to boost my self-esteem, and of course I had to reply with a snarky comment. What are you, a psychologist? He would roll his eyes and laugh, and just hearing his laugh seemed to put a little joy into my life. I found myself slowly opening up to him more and more, giving a little more trust to him as I became more comfortable. Over the last month. We had created lots of memories that I would forever cherish. Just being with him made me feel more confident about myself because with him, I didn't have to put up a facade. I could just be my normal self, and he accepted me for the way I was. However, today was also a day that I would remember. 
Today was the day that all of the fun and sunshine that he brought into my life would disappear. Beautiful day today. I asked Peter as he lay back and watched the clouds. The sky was painted such a deep rich blue and the clouds were so puffy that they looked like animal-shaped cotton balls floating through the air. The temperature was about mid-70s, which was enough to make my porcelain skin warm up a bit from the touch of the blazing sun. Gorgeous, I replied as I laid down beside him. I like the sunlight was more than I like the moonlight. In Netherland, it's always dark. I mean of course the moonlight is beautifully breathtaking, but there's only so much you can do in eternal darkness. I prefer the sunlight, where you can see all forms of beauty for what they truly are, he said as a smile pushed up his cheeks. We pondered in silence for a little while until I spoke up. Cloud watching. This is something we should do more often, I said as I turned to face him. His face tensed up a bit as he slightly smiled. Ha! Huh. I could only wish. What? You don't want to? I tested. So you can do all of these activities but as soon as I recommend one, you back out. That's no fair dude. It's not that. He responded as he avoided making eye contact. A pang of nervousness formed in my stomach as my brain computed his words. What is it then? If you don't want to, then whatever. No, no. Of course I'd love to. It's just dot 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 after today. He hesitated as he uncomfortably shifted on the picnic blanket. As much as he avoided eye contact, I could tell that something was wrong from the way that his jaw and neck tensed up. The only time he would tense up like this is when he was nervous or when something was seriously wrong and by the way he was acting I knew something was off. Sitting up beside him, I looked him in the eyes. His beautiful emerald eyes sparkled with a glossy film. They held a certain type of sadness that was infectious. Seeing him like this only made the emotion transfer to my own being, engulfing me in worry and a deepened type of sadness. Peter, what are you trying to say? Pursing his lips, he sat up and pulled his knees up to his chest. I have another person I've been assigned to. Hitting me like a wrecking ball. My stomach sunk deeply inward. Trying to fight back my emotions, a giant lump grew in my throat. You're leaving? Is that what you're indirectly trying to tell me? I asked as tears filled my eyes. As the question escaped my lips, my voice faltered and he seemed to know this. Taken aback by my question, he looked toward the ground and then looked back up as we locked our teary eyes. Nervously biting his lip. He replied, I'm afraid so. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Don. You're leaving. For how long? I asked, my heart beating rapidly in my chest. Lady, he sighed, putting his hand through his hair. I wish this were easier. I really do but. But why didn't you tell me? I shrieked. How could he have not even bothered to mention that he was leaving so soon? It had only been about a month. I didn't want you to worry about it, he said, the softness in his green eyes melting my heart. What's the point in worrying about when things are going to end? Living like that never really lets you enjoy anything you do. You just obsess over when the time is going to be over with. As much as I wanted to ignore what he said in anger, there was a truth to the words he spoke. It was true that I would have worried about his departure. But finding out the news like this only made the pain hurt much worse. There would be so many things left undone, unsaid, and if I faced the basic facts, I don't know how I was going to go on without him. Throughout the last month, I had grew a strong bond with him. He was my colleague, he was the one that I considered to be a friend, and that's saying a lot coming from a girl like me. But but, how could you? I asked one single tear trickling down my face. I hated becoming so vulnerable in front of but I felt hurt, betrayed. I'm so sorry, he said soothingly. I never meant to. Lady, don't cry. I never meant to upset you. It's just, I tried to explain. I can't do this without you. 
I can't go on with my life knowing that you're not here. He grabbed my hand and placed his free hand on my shoulder. Look at me, Lenny. Throughout this past month I've gotten to know you, the real you. The one who looks pale as a ghost when I wake her up at 3am. The girl who prefers chocolate over vanilla. The girl who is afraid of falling flat on her face when roller skating. I've gotten to know you, the real you, the most beautiful human being that my two eyes have ever laid on, he said while slowly wiping away my tear with his thumb. So no need to cry pretty girl. I know you've got this all handled. You don't need me here to know that you are an all-round amazing person. You just need to believe. There's nothing to it. But there was a whole lot more to it because without him here, I was as good as being invisible. Lightning underscore striker 2016. Shimmer. Daytime sadness passed into nighttime madness and at the strike of midnight I knew that every single moment I ever shared with him would be reversed. Checking the time on my phone, I saw that it was 11.26. Biting my lip, I turned away from him. I couldn't let him see the devastation written on my face. A burning sensation built up in my stomach, tingling in a sad kind of nervousness. My breathing became uneven and I couldn't help but want to break down crying every single time I looked him in the eyes. In about a half hour, he would be nothing but a memory in the shadows. Guess it's time to clean up. I'll walk you home one last time, he said as he picked up our picnic area. Stop saying that, I harshly replied. Noticing the bitterness in my tone, he quickly glanced over at me. Nervously breaking his gaze, he let out a long sigh. As he took off, I reluctantly followed him to my house. The walk home was mostly silence and was perhaps the most awkward moment we had ever shared. We both simultaneously drowned in unsaid thoughts and in our own sorrow. I had no idea how he felt, but I knew that I would never forget this boy who had taught me so much about myself in such a little amount of time. I would never forget the boy who taught me to live freely and the boy who taught me to love myself for who I was. Glossy eyed, he stared at the saddened expressions on my face. Well we're here at your wonderful doorstep. I don't want to be here, I replied, a tear rolling down my face. I have six minutes, Laney, so I would just like to take the time to say thank you for everything you've done for me. Me? I asked, pointing to myself. What have I ever done for you? A sorrowful smile crept up on his face. You've made me feel like a real person, like I had a real heart, a real friend. You know this job can be a bit stressful, so thank you for making me feel human once again. But aren't you human? I curiously asked as I raised a brow. He chuckled. Of course I am. However, that often gets overlooked when you're Peter Pan. Well Peter Pan, I have to say that I've grown quite fond of you. I'm going to miss you dear friend, I said as I approached him. Wrapping my arms around his torso, he was taken by surprise. As the realization finally dawned on him, his firm arms wrapped around my smaller frame. Embracing each other in sorrowful sadness, we stood there for a few seconds until he jumped up. Oh, I almost forgot. I got a present for you. Pulling something out of his pocket, its thin chain glistened in the moonlight. Gently placing the item in my hand, I examined it. It was a necklace that had a little bottle attached to it. Within the bottle, grains of glitter shimmered and glistened. Oh Peter, I love it. Thank you so much. Can you help me put it on? He smiled. I thought you would like it. It's simple, but I wanted to leave you a little gift. Taking the necklace, he walked behind me and sealed its clasp. There you go. It looks like it was made just for you. Giggling, he came to face me. Well on that note, I have one minute until departure. It was very nice to meet you lady. I do hope that our paths cross again sometime in the near future. As my inner emotions seeped outward, a frown formed on my face. Hey Peter? Yeah? Do you think you'll remember me? As he smiled, 
His silhouette began to fade into a golden shimmer. How would I ever be able to forget you? My heart dropped at the sight before me. Throughout the whole day, this had been the one event that I was regretting to ever experience. Now as I was experiencing it, my heart held a heaviness that was incomparable to anything else I had ever felt in my life. Taking one last glance at his golden silhouette, I noticed a tear trickle down from his face. As he disappeared from all of reality, my eyes seeped tears and my mouth whispered the four words that I had been ever so terrified to utter beforehand. Peter, I love you. But it was too late. Peter was no longer here. Peter no longer existed. Wishing he was still here, I groggily dragged myself to my bedroom. As I changed into my pajamas, I laid in my bed and thought of him. Remembering the smile he shot me through his golden shimmer, I fell into a slumber hoping and praying that our paths would one day cross again. End of Book 1 Lightning Underscore Striker 2016 Series Directory Hi and thank you so much for reading Peter. I hope you enjoyed it and am thrilled to say that Peter has been turned into an entire series titled, The Lost Boy Series. Below is a list of all the books and works in progress in the recommended reading order. I'm planning a few spin-offs as well and some of them fit in between the books in the series, so the directory is here to make your reading experience as convenient as it can be. Once again, thank you so much for reading. Recommended Reading Order Peter, Lost Boy Series Number 1 Slash Slash Completed The book that started it all. Gray Cover the modern-day retelling of Peter Pan, where a boy named Peter is sent to Earth to help a girl learn to love herself again. Pan, Lost Boy Series Number 2 Slash Slash Completed Green Cover When the tragic life of a young mortal boy leads two souls to meet once again. M-E-V-E-R-L-A-N-D, Lost Boy Series Number 3 Slash Slash In Progress Red Cover Following the events of Netherland Peter and Lady must learn to cope with the consequences of an unpredictable thing called life. Texts from Thomas, Tap Story Slash Slash Completed The spin-off to the Lost Boy series. It is a featured story under the romance section of the Tap by Wattpad APP and focuses on the growing relationship between our two favorite sidekicks, Thomas and Jen. While it is recommended that you read this after the first bit of Netherland, it can stand as an individual story as well. Many have actually read the story on the TAP APP and then came and read the series. Pixie Dust, Lost Boy Series Number 4 Slash Slash Coming 2018 Following the events of Netherland, the gang face an even bigger threat, Peter's competition. Plot subject to change. Unknown spin-off Slash Slash Coming 2018 the spin-off to the Lost Boy series about a character who has seen the secrets that Neverland has to hide. A.K.A. An unannounced story that is only saved in Jay's brain. More info coming later on. Plot subject to change. Lost Boy series number 5 slash slash early 2019. Follows the events of Pixie Dust. Finnegan slash slash maybe. The spin-offs that may or may not be happening revolving around the life of young Finnegan Pan. Please be aware that schedule dates may change but Jay works her best to keep you all informed. Also be aware that books tilde like Finnegan tilde may or may not be written depending on many different factors. 01. Greetings as my shimmering silhouette reappeared on this empty place that I called home. A single tear gracefully kissed my flesh as if it were hanging on to the last moment that I had with her. Never had my heart felt like it had become one with the pit in my stomach, but there was always room for first-time experiences. Taking in a deep breath, I inhaled and squeezed my eyes tightly. Compose yourself, Peter. Mom and Dad will know something's wrong. And Finn will be able to sense the sadness in the air. He always does. Letting out the excess air that filled my stomach, I opened my eyes and hesitated to walk up the stairs. Something just felt dot 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 wrong. Lady needed me. She still needed me. 
How fair was it that I was sent back to Neverland when I never truly fulfilled my purpose in the first place. It irritated me, even infuriated me that I had to leave her there in that state of mind. Yet as I stood here on the front steps of my house, I was reluctant to go in. The boy that I once was seemed to have left himself back on earth because the boy standing at the front steps now was filled with guilt, doubt, and stress. Building up the confidence to take steps forward toward the door, I prepared to seal my fate. The council would disown me, ban me from Neverland. I would get ripped away from my family and put in isolation all because deep down, I knew the truth. In this exact moment in time, my heart yearned for her presence. Wanting nothing more than to be in the same atmosphere as her, the scary realization dawned upon me as if I were being consumed by an ocean wave itself. I liked her. I liked her in a way that no other person has ever made me feel. She not only made my whole life fill up with a delightful joy, but she understood how it felt to be perfectly imperfect. Lady Riverdale simply took my soul spoke healing words into it, and made me feel alive. If I were to have to give up my entire lifestyle to feel that way once more, I would give it up in a single heartbeat. In this very moment as I stood before my house, my conscience was drowning in thoughts of her. And as a gloss covered my emerald eye creases, I knew I had to conceal these feelings. If anyone knew, if anyone had a hint of the emotions I was succumbing to, I would be nothing more than a felon, an immortal who had committed the crime of being romantically fascinated with a mortal. My eyes squeezed together, trying to fight the rest of the tears that were ready to make their journey down my face. On impulse, my finger pressed on the front doorbell. It was better to face everything now than never. My heart beat fastened as it thumped against the interior of my chest. Within a few seconds, the door swooshed open and I was greeted by two smiling faces. Oh my pixie and dust, you're home. Shouted my mother as she ran outside and wrapped her loving arms around me. Though her frame was shorter than mine, I wrapped a single arm around her small body. Looking at my dad, I flashed him a grin. He sent me a quick smile as he put his hands in his pocket, yet his expression quickly morphed into another. Gnawing at his lip. He nodded towards my mother and I and made his way over to us. His stone-cold expression only made a shiver go down my spine and made my mind race a million miles per hour. Dad was never this serious. He was always chipper and was actually known to be one of the friendliest people here in Neverland. This only led me to assume that something terrible had happened when I was gone. Nice to have you home again, son said my father as he joined in the group hug. I missed you guys, I replied, grinning at my parents like an idiot. Doing all I could to not let my inner sadness reach my surface, I acted as I always have, happy, as if I had no real cares in the world. In a way, it did bother me that I even had to fake happiness around my own family, but what else could I do? There were duties that I had to uphold and being happy was the simplest of them all. My mother was thrilled and excited that I had safely returned. My father however, kept staring at me in the weirdest manner. What was wrong with him today? Was he in the mood? Mother's blonde hair bounced up and down as she did. I made your favorite snack. You know those chocolate chip cookies, the ones that? That Belle's mom gets from work. I asked excitedly nearly bouncing along with her. Nodding in excitement, she flashed me a toothy grin. She came by the other day and dropped some off. Needless to say, Finn has been bugging me to make them all week but I told him no, we have to save those for when Peter gets home, she said with a chuckle. All right. Well thanks mom. I'm just gonna go get settled upstairs and say hi to Finn. I'll be back down in a few I said as I rushed past them. Turning around in the doorway, I glanced between both of my parents. Where is he anyway? Mom rolled her bright blue eyes. Are you kidding? You're asking about Finn? That boy never leaves his room. Dad chuckled to my relief, 
the sign that he was still his normal self. They began to walk inside the house, conversating amongst themselves. As I shot them a quick wave, I swiftly began to run up the staircase and popped my head into the doorway of my room. Everything looked to be in the exact place I left it, but I decided that further analyzing could wait till later. Making my way past the bathroom, I excitedly knocked on the door next to it. H.M. grumbled a voice from inside. Guess who? Peter? Excitedly asked the masculine voice. As I heard the squeaking from the coils of his bed, I knew he would be nearing his door soon. So I prepared myself to get bombarded with questions of my visit to Earth. Lightning underscore striker 2017. Do you like hearing from Peter's POV so far? 02. Peter? Finn? Peter? Excitedly asked the masculine voice. I never could get over the fact that Finn's squeaky little boy voice was gone. It was odd to have such a deep voice coming from my little brother, but either way I had to understand that he was growing up. As I heard the swift shuffling of his footsteps, he threw his door open and shot me a big, boyish grin. Stepping my way into his room, he slammed the door shut and nearly bounced up and down. Did you bring me back anything? He asked as stars danced within his green irises. As I looked at him, all I could see was my spitting image staring straight back at me. Besides the fact that his hair was a darker shade of brown, he had freckles, and he was two years younger, Finnegan Pan could literally steal my identity and get away with it. Hello to you too, I said while playfully rolling my eyes. I'm serious though, did you? S-H-H-H. I whispered putting the finger to my lips. Remember this is our secret. I'm not supposed to do this. His lips forming into a slight pout, he searched my expression to see if there was genuine anger behind my words. Sorry. Grumbled Finn. Shaking my head back and forth, I smiled. I've always told you about your volume, Finn. Just try to keep it on a normal level. Hanging his head in defeat, I took a seat next to him. Sitting on the soft cushion of his bed, I pulled a round object out of my pocket. Now, this my dear brother is something very near and dear to American culture. Dot 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 or at least it seems to be. I've seen quite a few of these before but only now managed to get one, I said as a light chuckle escaped my lips. In all honesty, it really was a struggle to get this item. I actually had to pick it up while the kid playing with it looked away. Taking the object and placing it in his palm, Finnegan's eyes lit up with excitement. What is this? He asked as his eyes curiously scanned my expression. Tossing it from one palm to the other, he curiously rolled a spherical object in his hand. That is a baseball, I replied, matter of factly. Kids of all ages love hitting it with a wooden stick and making it flight. But what fun is that? I chuckled. It's a Dame Mortel's plate. Since they can't flight, I guess that's the closest thing they have. Oh, Finn uttered as if he were trying to picture the image I verbally provided for him. After a few seconds of silence, he looked up and shot me that famous grin again. How do you manage to get this one, Pete? Did you steal it? He said as he got on his floor and pulled the shoe box out from under his bed. Taking the lid off, he shuffled around a few other objects that I had brought him from other trips to Earth. Making a place for the baseball, he placed it in the box and stared at it in awe. Actually, putting a nervous hand through my hair, Finn's dark green eyes widened in realization. Omit pixie and dust Peter, you stole it. I wouldn't call it stealing dog dot dot maybe like borrowing it for forever. Pete, you wasn't the only thing I stole. I cut him off. Pacing the floor, Finn shook his head back and forth. Stopping and staring up at me, his button eyes rapidly scanned my pockets. You cooked. What else did you steal? Your name. I trailed off. This made my brother's eyebrows meet at the middle of his forehead. My name? How'd you do that? 
Well, I had to enroll into another school, I said with as my eyes sarcastically rolled. Who are you? He said with a chuckle. Seriously? But with that said, I needed a new last name and so I took your first name. This made him laugh so hard that he had to hold his stomach. You seriously cannot think of an original name? You just had to steal mine. Well, you were the first person I thought of. So yeah, I replied with a chuckle. As I shuffled on Finn's bed, a crinkling noise came from the depths of my hoodie pocket. Oh, I almost forgot. I said as I pulled out the shiny, silver package. Look at this. With googly eyes, Finn nearly began drooling over the tiny pastries in my hand. I stole these from Lainey's pantry. Who is Lainey? Finn asked as he got up and sat cross-legged on his rug. The last assignment I had. She was really nice. I said as I trailed off. Finn cocked his head to the side as he analyzed my saddened expression. Just as I thought he was going to start digging for more information, he cracked a smirk. What flavor are they this time? Chocolate chip, I said as my hand began to teasingly shake the package before him. Oh, ooh, ooh, you better share, said Finn. If he were some sort of pet, he would have been sticking his tongue out and wagging his tail. Desperate to get his hand on the package, he nearly jumped on me until we heard footsteps coming up the stairs. We each shot each other a wide-eyed look and as I threw the pop-tarts at him, he knew what to do. He swiftly placed them in his shoe box, put the lid over it and swiftly slid it under his bed. If Mom and Dad saw that I was taking things home from Earth, I could get in big trouble. If the council caught on to it, I could be in ever bigger trouble. Finn asked my father before he came in. Yeah, replied Finn. M is on the phone. She wanted to know if she could come over to get some help with some work after school tomorrow. Tell her, yeah. Why don't you tell her yourself? Dad, he whined. I'm talking with Peter. Fine, stated my dad in defeat. He knew just how close Finn and I were and since I had just returned home, he had mercy on little Finn. As we heard my father's footsteps descending the stairs, I raised a curious eyebrow at him. Him? Them as in Jack's sister, Ember Frost. Seriously? Finn's cheeks became a canvas of rosy pink that peeked out between the freckles that were sprinkled across his cheeks. As he twiddled with his thumbs and avoided eye contact, I stared at him. Oh boy, we were in for a serious talk. Lightning underscore striker 2017. After struggling with a name for Jack's sister, decided to go with Ember because December circumflex accent underscore circumflex accent. And yes. Surprise! Peter has a baby brother. Circumflex accent underscore circumflex accent. 03, Finn and number sign X 27s inner thoughts. Crossing my arms over my chest, my eyes stared straight at my blushing little brother. At this point in time, he didn't dare to make eye contact with me. Just curious, I thought M was a pretty bright girl. Matter of fact, I thought she was one of the top students in your grade. Finn toyed with the edge of the rug he was sitting on, not uttering a single word. Am I wrong? Said my voice has more of a demand than an actual question. Finn's eyes peeked up at mine as his cheeks were still a rosy pink. No dot. He uttered. So just curious, I said, twisting my chin on my hand. The corners of my lips pulled into a teasing smirk. Why in the world would Ember Frost need help with homework when she already has great grades? Forget the pale pink blush on his face because Finnegan Pan had now reached the state where he was tomato red. Chuckling, my head shook from side to side. You may have mom and dad fooled, but you cannot fool me, I said staring at him as he shamefully avoided looking at me. Out of nowhere frustrated, angry tears slipped down his face. It's not my fault. It just happened. He protested as guilt ate away at him. Hopping down from his bed, I kneeled before him and placed both hands on his shoulders. 
He wiped his few tears away as he tried to wiggle away from my grasp. Look at me, Finn, I said. As much as he wanted to avoid my gaze, he averted his attention and locked eyes with me. Just through his little irises I could see the guilt, the fear that was seeping into his very system. He was scared of what the council would do if they found out about his feelings for her. You cannot tell anyone about this, not mom, not dad, not em. And whatever you do, never say either of the L words out loud, I told him, referring to the words like and love. Legend has it that if you said either of those words referring to another person, the council would strip you of your powers and then lock you away somewhere that no one has ever escaped from. Why they were so afraid of feelings, I had no clue. I had always assumed it was because each of us in Netherland had a job to carry out and if we were too occupied with each other, we would forget all about that. Finn nodded in understanding, an expression of fear creeping up on his adolescent face. How am I supposed to hide it? I shrugged. You don't have to necessarily hide it. You can still be nice to her. Just don't act upon it. You know, no hand-holding. No cute gestures. Finn's eyebrow cocked to the side. Why do I feel like you're talking from experience? Is something going on between you and Belle that I don't know about? My face morphed into an expression of disgust. Adu, no. Why do you always assume that? Because she seems to enjoy your company a little too much and you don't seem to mind it, he stated as he nonchalantly shrugged. Because I don't mind it, I stated. But I've always seen her as a sister figure. Finn smirked. Then who is this lady girl? My heart dropped into my stomach. Staring at him with widened eyes, all I could do was blink. Say what? Finn shook his head in laugh. I didn't even think you had the guts to go that far. Dude, she's immortal. What are you thinking? I have no idea what you're talking about. MMMHMM, that's why when you were talking about stealing those Pop-Tarts at her house, your eyes lit up. That's no factual evidence. My eyes light up at the sight of Pop-Tarts anywhere, I protested. Yeah. But it's not just that. He continued, his emerald eyes mischievously looking for any sign of discomfort coming from me. What do you mean? Struggling to play it cool, Finn knew that he had me on the edge. He knew that any second now, he would corner me and I would give in. What a sly little puppy of a brother I had. You seem dot 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 lonely dot you had this sad vibe coming off of you since you came back dot 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 issue dot 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 issue the reason why was this boy a freaking mind reader. I knew he was going to figure me out, but I didn't expect him to figure anything out this fast. Debating whether it would be best to come clean or to let things be, I decided to spill the beans to the one person that wouldn't dare to spill my secret. As frustrated as I was over the whole situation, it was best if I talked it out with someone. Since Finn had never uttered my secrets to a single soul, it would probably be best if I informed him of my feelings. Clasping my hands over my lap, my body leaned forward and our eyes locked in a serious manner. You swear you won't tell a soul. Making a zipper motion over his lips, Finn's cheeks pushed up as he smiled. You have a hand's sincere promise. Nodding and understanding, it felt as though a giant weight was lifted off my chest. Suddenly, I felt as though all the walls that were surrounding my secrets finally tumbled down. Lady Riverdale is probably the most amazing thing to exist since Pop-Tarts were invented. With that cheesy comparison, Finn let out a youthful chuckle. And I felt safe knowing that he understood just how much she meant to me. Lightning underscore striker 2017 04 contained. So I just wanted to shout out the amazing collect hates you for making this super freaking cute drawing of Peter and Finn. Seriously, she's amazingly talented and you should also check out her art page on Instagram at Heli Esart. Go do it. You will not regret it. 
tilde 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 Playing on the plush cushion of my bed. One hand one behind my head while the other tossed up the empty napkin to the cookie I had stolen into my bedroom. As my eyes gazed over the surroundings outside, a pang of guilt overcame my conscience. Here I was, my whole entire world literally seated on a soft, white lining of clouds while Lainey was out there surrounded by the darkness of the world. Why was it that my world could seem so quiet, so peaceful, compared to hers? Why did we have to be torn light tires apart from each other? The soft knock on my bedroom door startled me out of my thoughts. Come in. Dot. I uttered, not taking my gaze away from the paper ball that was floating in mid-air. Finn's attention was on the paper ball that floated about three feet above my body, and he smiled as he noticed that its movements were following the direction in which my finger pointed. Seriously? You were a month away and all you do when you come home is levitate a crumpled napkin. Shrugging, I tossed the crumpled napkin toward his face with a flick of my finger. Finn managed to catch it right before it bobbed him in the face. And I also expected that, he said with a boyish smirk. Noticing that he had left the door open, he glided toward the door and closed it. Hey, your flying has gotten faster, I complimented with a nod. My praise made his emerald irises shimmer as he glowed with pride. Taking a quick bow, my smiley brother once again flashed me his famous grin. I've been practicing while you've been gone. Propping mute eyes up on my bed, I leaned my body on a pillow. Wow, seems like a lot has happened while I was gone. A new skill, a new secret, I said while wiggling my eyebrows in a teasing manner. The light blush overcame Finn's face, as he knew exactly to what I was referring to. Goodness, what else did I miss? Finn shrugged. Hey, what else can I say? Nothing really. Just normal school stuff. Mom and Dad are just hanging in there like always. Have they been strict lately? Nope, they've been pretty cool with me, he said as he sprawled himself out on the wooden floorboards. But what's really concerning me, he continued, is you. Cocking an eyebrow at him, I was curious as to where this conversation was headed. Which of my other flaws did Finn want to point out now? And exactly why is that? You seem so sad, dude. What's up with you? I'm mentally drained is all. And there go the excuses again. Glaring at him, he ignored my gesture. Seriously Pete? I'm wondering if you should take a break is all. These assignments dot 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 it's like they've been taking the life out of you. First Ian, now Lainey. As I felt a fire rage within my body, my buddy swiftly went into defense mode. The scared expression glued onto his face when he saw the flames dancing in my eyes. Ryan was sick. He was a ten-year-old kid. How in the world do you not expect me to react to that? His body was shrimpling away, eating itself alive. And I couldn't do nothing about it. Finn began inching away from me little by little, pushing his back up against the nearest wall. After a few seconds of panting, my eyes squeezed together and a little tear slipped out of the corner of my eyes. And Lainey is dot 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 Lainey is just gone. And there rolled the little droplets of water down the sides of my eyes, rolling down my chest into this never-ending abyss. But this is exactly what I was talking about, Pete. Finn spoke softly. He stood up and took soft steps toward me as he placed a hand on my shoulder. It's eating away at you. And being quite honest with myself, I think he was right. Some of these assignments did take a toll on my body, on my mental health. In a way, there was no way that I was able to blame Finn for being concerned because I would be the same way with him. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to be a dot 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 a dust spitter, he said, whispering the last two words so mom and dad wouldn't hear him uttering those forbidden swear words. Raising an eyebrow at his sudden change of words, he shook his head. How can you of all people be correcting me? That's beside the point, I uttered. 
You're beside the point, he mopped, making his voice an octave higher. Now if you'll just listen to me instead of focusing on my colorful vocabulary, you'll see that I'm actually concerned about you. I think you need to talk to the council and tell them to lay off you for a while. But it's my duty, I protested. No, no, number that's where you're wrong. The council chose you since when you were a toddler. They saw how compassionate you were and they took advantage of you. Tell me Peter, did you ever really get a say in your own future? And once again, Finnegan Pan made a valid point. From the age of six, they determined that I was going to be the one being from Neverland who would go down to earth and mend broken hearts. Yet, they never really thought about the fact that mine was breaking in the process. In the end, the council forced this upon my parents, upon Finn, upon me. They were the ones who brought this idea upon my parents and what else were my mom and dad to do but say yes. So they kept a close eye on me. They shaped me. They indirectly formed me into the person they wanted me to be, this robotic being that was only filled with selflessness and compassion for others. Yet, would it be a crime if I decided that I wanted to be selfish? That I wanted to have the freedom that every other person on Neverland had? With the realization that Finn's words were true, my eyes widened. No, I never did get the say. Finn's lips pursed together as his eyebrows scrunched together in the middle of his forehead. My point exactly. Finn's eyes searched my face as he gnawed at his lip. All I'm saying is that you've been going down to earth since you were 13. Maybe it's time you took a break. He didn't get it. He just didn't get it. These people depended on me, they needed me. How was I to feel if I left my duties unattended? I would be deemed a fool, a failure. Putting a frustrated hand through my hair I sighed. I wish I could do that Finn, but I have duties to fulfill. I'm telling you man, just. I'm telling you as your brother to just let it go, I said, sternly holding his gaze. A thick silence hung in the air between us the tension over which of us had the most valid point. But at this point, it was just best if Finn dropped it. I know that he had all the best intentions, but Finn would never have this responsibility in his hands. He would never know how much of a curse this earthly experience could be. Fine, he said throwing his hands up in the air. Rolling over on my side, I stared outside the window where the sky was fading into a rich shade of violet. Regardless if the night were able to cure the worries of the day, it wasn't able to cure my morning heart. Lightning underscore striker 2017 05 Ebony Illusions It was for minutes past midnight as I laid on my soft mattress and sulked out the window. The creak of my door startled me as it was unexpected until I saw Finnegan's emerald eyes roaming my darkened room. Hey, I unenthusiastically greeted. Taking this as a sign that it was okay for him to come inside, he quietly shut the door behind him and took soft steps in. He uttered an emotionless, hey. With a nod of his head, my attention averted back out the window. Look, I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about earlier. I shouldn't have. Don't worry about it, I uttered, turning my body to face him as he took a seat on a crate against the opposite wall. You were right. Confusion danced within his green irises. I'm sorry, did you just say what I think you did? That I'm actually right? The kid's sense of humor managed to make me smile. Yeah, you were. I think a break would be good at this point in time but please be me. Just let me go on with my job. Who else is going to help save the world? Finn placed his hands on his knees and shook his head. I'm pretty sure they're able to handle themselves. They inhabit a whole planet for crying out loud. And has it exploded yet? Staring at him with widened eyes, we both couldn't help but to burst out laughing. Finn, you can't just say stuff like that dude. He shrugged. But it hasn't right? Which again proves that they are able to handle themselves. You need to be able to handle yourself as well. And you should have the right to quit when you need a mental break. 
as an awkward silence danced between the two of us, the light sight came out of thin. You look like you're down in the dumps. Do you want to go practice flying with me? Raising an eyebrow at his offer, he was nearly bouncing out of his seat as his button eyes slightly widened in anticipation. As much as I felt bad for having to pass on his offer, I didn't want my glum mood to ruin his day. Maybe some other time. I'm still trying to settle in and stuff hand. He nodded, doing his best to hide the obvious signs of disappointment on his face. Oh, okay. I just thought you needed something to take your mind off those thoughts. Thanks thought. I appreciate it. I know I haven't been around much to play with you, but I promise I'll go flying with you before I have to take off again. His eyes lit up so bright that they put the stars themselves to shame. Seriously? Pulling my feet up to my chest, my head nodded in response. Of course. Why would I not? He fiddled with the leather bracelet that was wrapped around his wrist. Well. You're always busy and I feel like I'm a bother when I ask you. He trailed off, careful to avoid my gaze. And then was when I realized that not only was I suffering from my beauties, but Finnegan Pan was as well. He was growing up in a confusing world, a world that prohibits us from feeling emotions that came natural to the bodies that we had. He was growing up in a world where he barely saw his older brother. The only person that he could truly share his innermost thoughts with. No wonder Finn seemed so confused, so lost. Because within the month I was gone, he needed me. He needed my guidance and my advice. Within the time I was gone, Finn had doubts and questions regarding his flying and life in general. So while I was away attending to my duties, there was so much that I was missing within my household. We were two souls who were secretly fighting for freedom from the rules that bound and contained us, and yet Finn found himself drowning while I constantly fled away to Earth. Other works. Heartbreak Hotline. When a desperate boy calls into a hotline for tips on how to get his dream girl. A complete short story. Our Beating Hearts. The tale of two flawed teens who struggle with their self-worth and their feelings for each other. Once upon a city. The Cinderella retelling in the modeling industry. Because you should be able to love yourself for who you really are. Also part of the number sign one Chupano top 25 and was optioned for publication by Gallery Books. Broken. When an average girl realizes she belongs to a world of powers and amazing abilities. In bloom. Sheriff Keller is framing Jughead Jones for Jason Blossom's death and Raven thinks she might be able to uncover evidence. Truthfully. A collection of ten word stories. Running from myself. A collection of poems. The Time Traveler Christmas. When the only present he gets for Christmas is memories of his lost love. Happy one year of Peter. Just wanted to thank you all for all of the amazing amount of love and support to Peter and the Lost Boy series. On this day last year, I was finishing up the last chapter of Peter and had a whole entire series just waiting to be told. Now we're currently on the third book and counting. So I just wanted to thank all of you number sign Lost Boys for all of the supportive comments on here, Instagram, and Twitter. The series would be absolutely nowhere without you all. Here's to a happy one year and may many more come. Till that J. Number sign what pad block party post is now live. Hello number sign lost boys. I am super excited and nervous to announce that my number sign what pad block party post is now live. Here you'll see an exclusive interview where Peter and Lady talk about the future of the Lost Boy series. There are some very important bits and hints of information in there, so you definitely don't want to miss this. By the way, H-U-U-U-U-G-E thanks to Carly Annie Pound for being such an amazing host. I appreciate everything that you have done to organize this event. Make sure you check it out Carly Annie Pound's profile and I'll also post a link in the comments of this chapter. Come stop by and drop a comment or two. Hope to see you there. Till that J. If you're interested.
Hey guys. I just started my first dialogue short story. It's called Heartbreak Hotline and is about a boy who is desperate for some advice on how to get a girl to like him. It's the first book up on my bio if you're interested. Hope to see you there. Thomas is here. It's here number sign lost voice. Check out the Wattpad version of texts from Thomas. Available on my profile experience. The end.